Hello everybody, it's me, D Sparta, and welcome to my channel. How are you all doing today, my friends? It is Friday! But I'm probably still going to be recording and working on videos through the weekend, so... But my family will be home, and I always like that. <laughs> Folks, ah, today we're going to be talking about Scientology, Danny Masterson, and... who we're going to get into Ashton Kutcher... And you know, we're going to get into the letters. We're going to get into it all today. I'm going to try and summarize everything up. And then we're going to get into a tarot reading. I just, there is just, ah, it's icky. It's icky. Um, the victims of Danny Masterson, um, two of them were able, there was, there were three victims. One, there's been a mistrial because there was a hung jury. Which did affect, so that case did not continue. But the other two cases did, and Danny is faced with the um, maximum sentence of 30 years in prison. Wow. Um, the victims were allowed to do impact statements and uh, to help the judge determine on the sentencing. And letters were written to hopefully the, to try and convince the judge to lower it all. And people are wondering why it took so long for these girls to come, these women to come forward. And I'll cover a little bit about that and about Scientology. What a cult people call Scientology a cult. What exactly is a cult? Let me tell you. When it comes to religions, cults, and those things, that's right up my alley. That's what I went to college for. I got answers for you. And I want to get into all that. So, you know, I put chapter links down below. So the first part is addressing what is a cult. Then we're going to address um, Scientology and how they handled, affected the um, situation in trying to silence victims. Okay, this is... This is very concerning. Um, we've had people come out forward and they get Scientology. The, if you leave it, you usually get a big, huge mass thing of things, of uh, people trying to discredit you if you speak ill of it. And, and that's part of a cult, folks. Gotta tell you, it is. And at the end, we will be doing a tarot reading. I kind of want to look into what's going on with Ashton and going further with he and his wife. There is um, some... Uh, he and his wife... Uh, it's a sticky situation. We are going to cover that. Like I said, I'm going to put chapter links down below. So you can hit the sections that you want to hear. Watch them in any order. Jump straight to the readings. Let's just get into this, okay? So, yeah. And... Please remember, subscribe. If you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed? Hit that notification bell because my my videos, I don't have a set schedule because things happen, news and everything, and I want to get it out there and get these readings done for you in a more timely manner. And other times I have to do research because I a lot of you have told me you like the parts where I do the research and explain the situations. So I'm going to keep doing that for y'all. Yes, K-pop is still going to be covered. I've got another dark side of K-pop. We're going to be going over some legal cases with SM and their talent. I got it. We're going to get into a lot of different things. People are also concerned about there was elation and yet concern about Hive's recent announcement about they are going to um, re-sign BTS uh, extended contracts. What is really going on with that? Has I remember signed on? They're saying that it's going to, in time, each one will be able to sign. Is Hybe trying to push it? Or are the guys all on board? These are things I want to look into. I promise y'all. But I got to get into this whole thing with cults and Scientology. And I'm also going to do, um, got Russell Brand. Oh my gosh. Get ready. We've got a lot. <laughs> so, let's, um, yeah, let's just get straight into this stuff. Hi, 
thank you for sticking around with me, my friend. So, what is a cult? Well, cult, they, is it? They all, they think they have all the answers. The answers to your life, answers to all your questions, and they are the sole authority. That's kind of the gist. But let's break it, things down. According to Britannica, the definition of a cult is a small religious group that is not part of a larger and more acceptable accepted religion and has beliefs that are regarded by many people extreme or dangerous. That is the difference. There is extreme and dangerous beliefs. Um, it's not, it has dangerous stuff. So we're just going to go in further. Um, here are 10 ways to recognize, well, actually, I found, you know, there's 10, I got 13, 14 ways to recognize a cult. I was going to do 10, but you know what, there's so much. Number one, absolute authoritarianism without accountability. The leader is the end all, be all, everything all, and there he is. He will say the leader, he or she, or like they, or they, accountable to a higher power, or they are that higher power. Okay, and so they don't have anybody that they're account held being held accountable to. In a lot of churches and other places, even the pastors are being held accountable to the um, members of the church. They get to vote. If this person gets to remain pastor, I mean, these are, and who is leadership? There is some accountability and members actually have a say who could be the leader or not. Okay. With a cult, this does not exist. There is zero tolerance for criticism or questions. None. Now, when I went to seminary, what was I told? Question everything that you've learned so far. Ask the questions. It, don't just go with the flow of what others are telling you. That this is what this means in the scriptures. Find out for yourself. Ask the hard questions. Cults will not want you to ask questions. They're like, this is it. This is what it says. This is what we believe. And you need to... Believe and trust. You need to have faith. You can have faith and question your shit. You need to question your shit, folks. You don't just blindly believe something. Okay? <laughs> Number three. Lack of meaningful financial disclosure regarding the budget. Colts don't do that. I can tell you, I worked at a church. Worked, you know, with finances and accounting. They have to, they report quarterly reports to the church. And if they're being held, there's an office above them. If they're, you know, even higher, this church is part of affiliated with others like LDS or, you know, if there's Foursquare, there's Pentecostal, there's, um, you, you name it. There's Episcopalian, Lutheran, you know, Methodist. There is, the denomination has an, a main office and there's regional offices. There is accountability and they have to report publicly also what it is to their, to the members of their congregations. You get to see what money is being, what money they need to cover. I know some churches every week on the back of the ballot, on their ballot and on, on the bulletin, bulletins that, that people get. They will say, hey, this is how much money we've raised. This is how much we need for utilities. And this is how much we need for staff. And they tally all this. So you get to see what's going on. And when you donate, if you write on your check, you can put specifically, this is just an offering. Church can use it. For, I want this used for child ministries. I want this to be used for helping, you know, therapy for, um, domestic violence. You can specify how the church must use that money. Colts won't have any shit like that. Okay. And then now the, you give them all your money and yeah, that's it. <laughs> 
They don't give meaning or they'll just give a blanket of we need to raise this much, but they're not going into details. They don't. There's no accountability in the budget, basically. Number four, number four, folks, unreasonable fears about the outside world that often are involved conspiracies and persecutions. Yes, we do cover some conspiracy theories here on this channel. It's always interesting to dive in and look into see the possibilities and find out where these are like urban legends. Sometimes there's a core thing at the bottom that it, the, how it started and how it just evolved into a mess. Kind of like if you ever played that game Telephone. <laughs> so, and some people will say that the um, MAGA movement is like a cult. And you can see where they're so far, the things that I've listed, it does look kind of like it could be, doesn't it? Mm, they believe a lot of conspiracy theories. They have fears of all sorts of craziness. There is no full disclosure. Trump is taking money that he's saying is for his campaign and he's paying lawyer bills. He's doing all sorts of stuff. He's not letting you, he doesn't let you know his tax returns. We need to get into that. Okay, so that's something. And he, you can't criticize him or question him. He's, he's he's above it all. And he has never been held accountable for what he's done and until lately. And it's probably scaring the living shit out of him. And it should. <laughs> you can't can live like that and just think karma's not going to pay you know, come up and expect, you know, let uh, give you a free pass here, folks. Okay. But we'll skip that on. I've got it. But number five, a belief that former followers are always wrong for leaving. And there is never a legitimate reason for anyone else to leave. Isolating someone saying, hey, you can't, you know, it, if they're not going to follow us, they're in the wrong. They had no reason. It's, you can't even question why. You just, you can't have contact. You usually, you, you're not allowed to have any kind of contact often. There is the number six, the abuse of members. We're talking physical, mental, emotional abuse. It happens. And you're told it is okay. This is part of a growing or your learning process. The part of you, how you evolve to a, higher state, you know, number seven records, books, articles, or programs documenting the leaders or the uh, group's abuses. All of the, this stuff. <sighs> We're going to get into that with Scientology today, but churches, cults will try and hide all this stuff. Okay. And keep it out. Uh, going outside of there. Um, number eight. Number eight. Followers feel they are never able to be good enough. It's like no matter how hard you try or whatever you do, it's never enough. You have to just keep going. You're never good enough. You're never going to... Um, there's always something wrong, whether it's your appearance or your mental health. They don't always accept that mental health is, a, is real. Other times they try and say, oh yeah, we care about mental health, but they're, they're fucking with your mental health. <laughs> number eight, I mean, number nine, a belief that the leader is right at all times. They're, they can never, ever be wrong. Um, and you are always broken. You are broken and they're there to fix you because they know it all. Which ties with the, you're never able to be good enough. Number 10, I believe that the leader is, a, is the exclusive means of knowing truth or giving validation. It's all through them. It's it. Th 
number 11. Not all followers or members have full access to the doctrine or core beliefs. This is often left out when people put in their top tens. And I'm telling you, no, this is majorly important. It's like you have to go through a tier levels of going moving higher up so that you get to learn more and more about what the leader of this cult knows or what's in the doctrine if it's not readily accept you know accessible and i'm not telling because people will say oh yeah we follow the bible and there's a lot of ways to interpret that book and a lot of ways you could do to corrupt it. And that happens a lot. And so they're saying, well, there's actually more information. There's more. It's like a secret society where you don't, there's all sorts of great knowledge, but you don't have access to it. You have to prove yourself worthy, but you're never good enough, are you? Number 12, have a lack of of respect for the laws of the government. They believe they're above the law. The leaders feel they're above the law. Um, this is where you get into people who get these communes. No, I'm not saying living in a commune, you're living in a cult and it's bad. What I'm saying is how it's being run. Okay. If it's being run like the way this cult, the way I'm showing you cult is, then there's a problem. And especially if the commune feels like we police ourselves. We do everything ourselves. The leader's the one who handles it all. They, you know, judge and jury. They don't go let outside the government. They feel like they don't have to pay taxes. And so that, you know, that's where you get the, the religion. They, they get, you know, if they're religion, the, you know, church, then they don't have to pay taxes. But you have to go all this proof of it. But they just won't do it. Or members are also feel like they don't need to. Because their this is their life here is just temporary. They don't need to deal with the governing things, which you know even in the Bible Jesus says, "Render unto Caesar what that is Caesar's," and He's telling you, "No, you got to pay taxes. You got to follow the law. You're not above the law." But you see it twisted, and people ignoring little things like that. They have zero respect for the government. Not like a former president. <laughs> it just, it just, it Followers must alienate themselves from family and friends who do not follow the leader's beliefs. Okay. You're often not allowed to contact family. Even if someone is ill on their deathbed. You're not allowed, you know, they keep you from doing things, going and seeing other people, having friends and a social life outside of the cult, of this group. You can, you, this is, they, all your needs should be met right here. You don't need outside family or friends, which is bullshit. And the belief that all outsiders are toxic and dangerous to them. So this is another why they're isolated because it's a dangerous. See, cults are dangerous because they typically rely on deceptive and authoritative authoritarian practices to make members dependent on and obedient to this group, to the leader. Cults often cut members off from other forms of social and financial support and pose both physical and psychological risk to the members of the group. This is really, it's very dangerous. Members have to prove their worthiness to gain access to the information and, and also access even to the leader himself. There's a hierarchy. The, the, the leader indoctrinates that is elusive and exclusive to new followers. Often there are, as I explained, there's tears, the members have to work towards achieving for growth into the cult. With that growth comes enlightenment in the form of exclusive knowledge the leader has. This is ba the basics of what is a cult. If you see these signs, red flags of anything, and you're like, hey, I'm hanging out with this group of people, 
we're playing games. I'm in a virtual world. It seems like we're role playing, but wait a minute, something's off. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Use these these points here that I gave. If you start seeing the those red flags, keep that in mind. Let's get into all of Scientology with Danny Masterson and how they um, Scientology affected this the victims lives and protected the um the predators let's call it what it is folks right hello everybody welcome back and guess what <laughs> let's talk scientology <laughs> What is Scientology? Well, well, well. Um, it is a religion that, um, well, I'll, I'll give you that, how they describe themselves. They were founded in the 1950s by L. Ron Hubbard. And at the core of Scientology is the belief that each human has a reactive mind that responds to life's traumas, clouding the analytical mind. Yeah, yeah, folks, this is what I'm telling you. And keeping us from experiencing reality. Members of the religion submit to a process called auditing to find the sources of this trauma. And um, reliving those experiences in an attempt to neutralize them and reassert the primacy of analytic mind working toward a spiritual state called clear. Now, I, found, I came across an article on CNN, okay? Um, and I, they go into uh, a little bit more. And... I am going to be going through this article. I will have the link of it down below so that you can um, follow also. Okay, so the process of this whole auditing it involves a device called the E-meter. Now, um, if you have seen South Park and their take on, you know, explanation of Scientology, yes, the actor who played Chef, did leave because South Park made fun of Scientology. I mean, South Park's made fun of everything and everyone, but yeah. This guy couldn't handle, oh my gosh, they're dissing my religion now too. Yeah, everybody else is fine, but not me. <laughs> Side of the point here. But they, you know, Little Stan gets involved with this and the e-meters and he's freaking out and thinking he needs all this help and that auditing is going to help him. You know? um, this process using the e-meter, um, it measures the body's electric flow and an auditor is there asking a series of questions that um, the, they say reveal sources of trauma. Trust me, I know my many of my sources of trauma. My ex, my family. I, I could go into it, folks. <laughs> now, auditing uses processes, exact sets of questions asked or directions given by the auditor to help a person locate areas of spiritual distress to find out things about himself to improve his condition. That's according to what the church, how the church explains it. Yeah, and it's on their website, okay? So this is, you know, none of this stuff is like, I'm um, just pulling out of my ass, okay? <laughs> um, now, the church also says science is something one does, not something one believes in. Okay. <laughs> Now, auditing purports to identify spiritual distress from a person's current life and from past lives. 
Scientologists believe each person is an immortal being, a force that believers call a thetan. Now, um, there's a professor, David Bromley, who's quoted in this article, and this is what he had to say. You move up the bridge to freedom by working toward being an operating thetan, which is the highest level, transcends material law. Now, he also goes on to say that you occasionally can come across people in Scientology who say that they can change the material world with their mind. Now, there is, you can see where, where you put an intention out to manifest something in the world, you work something. So there's like some truths in here, you see? And that's how a cult works. It's like, there's some truths in here. It's like, oh, okay, okay. God, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see this. Uh, uh, but then there's just some stuff that's way out there. Now, um, David Bromley and some other scholars say that the church promotes the idea of an ancient intergalactic civilization in which millions of beings were destroyed and became what are known as body thetans, which continue to latch onto humans and cause more trauma. So apparently, there's aliens. Like, if you've seen the South Park, you know what I'm talking about. Was it Xenu? Yeah, sorry, my wife's over here. <laughs> you have no idea how much South Park we watch in our lives. It's been, you know, we've taken a break, but yeah. <laughs> but apparently, these ancient beings are trying to latch onto us, and they're they're the reason why we have all these problems. <laughs> Where our trauma comes from. Now. As I talked about in cults, you move up. And in Scientology, you move up into layers. And advanced Scientologists confront body thetans through more auditing. So they have to do all more auditing. And Bromley goes on to say that the church discloses that cosmetic history only to advanced Scientologists. So, you know, unless you are watching this video or reading up on what's on, they're going to be like, you know, they keep it very, very secret. Leah Remy has been coming out and other Scientologists, they're speaking out and going, this is the bullshit that they're feeding you and how they're controlling people. Um, the church's media affairs department would not respond to CNN when they asked, um, hey, is there something you want to comment on this article? They were like, no. Now, in 2008, CNN interviewed the church spokesman, Tommy Davis, and asked whether the basic tenet of the church in Scientology was to rid the body of space alien parasites, which is basically what they're saying, but this is what Tommy Davis said. Does that sound silly to you? He laughs. I mean, it's unrecognizable to me. People should really come to the church and find out for themselves what it is. Space alien parasites. And that's what it fucking is. These little things. That, you know. Sorry. I was just thinking of Star Trek Next Generation when this one admiral had a parasite in him. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen it, okay? And Picard's like, uh, something's wrong with this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's... Yeah. <laughs> now... I explained earlier how it was L. Ron Hubbard who was the founder in the, in the 1950s. And some people were like, well, who is this founder and how is he this great religious being? Now, he was born in Nebraska in 1911. He was the son of a U.S. Navy officer who circled the globe with his family. Now, according to Scientology expert Jay Gordon Melton, um, this is what he explains about who uh, L. Ron Hubbard is. So this is where I'm getting, we're getting that information from. Hubbard attended George Washington University in Washington, D.C., but left before graduating to launch his career as a fiction writer, and he went right into science fiction. Now, there's nothing wrong with science fiction. I love science fiction. I love, oh, I love Star, you've heard me talk about Star Trek already, but you have no idea about my passion for Star Wars. Doctor Who, you I mean, I love science fiction, okay? It's fun. 
but I don't make it into my religion. <laughs> but we'll get into this. After serving in World War II, Hubbard published a series of articles and then a book on what he described as a new approach to mental health. Remember what they talked about in cults, how they either ignore mental health or say, oh, we're here to help you with it, but the way they end up helping you end up just being worse. This guy's like, I got it all. My, I know how to handle mental health as if he's actually studied anything. He didn't finish college and he's a science fiction writer. Well, he called this new approach Dianetics. And his book, by the same name, quickly became a bestseller. Now, the success, success provoked Hubbard to establish a foundation that began to train people in his auditing techniques. And in 1954, the first Church of Scientology opened in Los Angeles, California. And other churches soon opened after. Now, um, Hubbard did die in 1986. So now the church is being run, I believe, by David Miss I Miss Kevich and if I mispronounce his name, I really don't care because I have zero respect for this group here. Now, why would this church be so so controversial? Okay, so yeah, we can make jokes and laugh about aliens, parasites attaching to people, doing auditing, trying to relive your trauma to find out what it is and how to help it and all this auditing and but what what makes it worse? You know, what why is this controversial? Well, let's let's look into this here. And, you know, as I was saying, you know, this article in CNN, you could follow along with me and I'm kind of just breezing over it. But many groups and individuals have challenged Scientology's legitimacy as a religion. Um, some will say this is not a religion. Um, I would say it's a cult. Okay. I personally, this is a personal religious beliefs. But some people are going to say it's not. Well, that's because it's, it's, in my opinion, all made up. Fucking bullshit fiction. All right. <sighs> I've said that. Thank you. Um, Scientologists have faced opposition from the medical community over the religion's claims about mental health. From the scientific community over its claims that the e-meters and other religious groups about its status as a religion. Because they're saying, you know, you're talking about you can heal mental health and you're using these Devices that you say are, you know, medically they're helping. Now remember that they don't believe in science. They live it. Uh, okay. Now, David Bromley, is, is he, I love him so much. He, when he, like, what he has to say about Scientology, he's like, it's part therapy, part religion, part UFO group. It's a mix of things that's unlike any other religious groups out there. Now, that does that, that mean it's not a religion? I'm not going to say it's not a religion. I, I, I'm not, you know, this down the line, you know, because this is, they're believing it. Their people are living their lives thinking this is how to live. And it's a different kind of religion. It's newer religion. But I still think, you know, but... I think people don't want, they don't want to give the church a tax exempt status. And I, I'm going to say this, when we start, if we're going to be giving churches tax exempt status, then you better give all fucking churches tax exempt status. I don't think churches should get tax exempt, especially when I've worked with giant churches and I've seen all the money. Just watch the righteous gemstones, okay? That's like the church I grew up in. I'm not, but I'm talking about where I worked, okay? Ministered in, to, in uh, yeah. So I will tell you right now that, you know, no, they shouldn't be taxed as much. Maybe, you know, not taxed as much if they're a smaller church. You know, there should be maybe some exemptions there. But maybe not. 
I'm not sure exactly how to do it. That's not my expertise. <laughs> Let's get into what I would do like. I like studying about occults and religions and sharing it with you. Now, the IRS has been denying Scientologists' attempts over and over again to get this tax-exempt status. However, in 1993, they were finally granted this. Um, because the church, many of the members are just saying this church is largely about self-improvement. We're about improving ourselves. And that's basically what a lot of religions are. You know, we're trying to improve ourselves and be better. Um, yeah, let's see what Tom Cruise had to say. To make this like a religion, okay? What I believe in my own life is that it's a search for how I can do things better. Whether it's a, being a better man or a better father or finding ways for myself to improve, individuals have to decide for decide what is true and real for them. Huh. Interesting, right? I think so. Um, I have decided Scientology is not for me. I don't believe in alien parasites latched on and caused my trauma. I just, just gonna put that out there. Man, I'm gonna be hated. <laughs> now, remember, Scientology is very, you know, we don't believe in science. You know, we live it, and, you know, they have their own ways of understanding of mental health. Um, they reject all psychiatric drugs and any kind of psychiatric help. Because he says it interferes with the functioning of the rational mind. And Scientologists to this day continue to promote this craziness. And this is like when I talked about how can you tell a cult? Well, when you start the leader, what he says is it. And you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. Psychiatry and psychiatric medications can help a person so that they can have a rational mind. Although sometimes I wonder how mine are working. <laughs> anyway, on the website of Church and Scientology, it says that the effects of medical and psychiatric drugs, whether painkillers, tranquilizers, or antidepressants, are as disastrous as illicit drugs. I am making a point of mentioning about these drugs because when we get into Danny Masterson and what he did, and then what some of these letters kept saying, it's going to go back to, oh, but I learned to stay away from drugs. And some of these guys had fucking drug problems, but, but Scientology's helped. <laughs> No one really, truly knows how many Scientologists are actually out there. The Church of Scientology does not give full disclosure. And that is something also what we discussed about in the cult. They do exaggerate their numbers. And can say that there's over 4.4 million people signing up every year as new, more churches are operating in, like they say, 167 countries. Now, but there really isn't that many buildings out there, and churches. There's not many, not many believers. Um, some say it's closer to the membership being, well, in the hundreds of thousands, nowhere near these millions of people. Um, a lot of the people we know and we're going to be talking about are Hollywood celebrities. Dun dun dun. So, got into that with a little bit with what Scientology is, um, why it's so controversial, why it some people say it's a religion, it's not, and why you know I will throw that into the whole. It's a cult. Let's get into the whole Danny Masterson. This video is a little bit more extended, but I've done a lot of research and there were things I needed to cover 
to help you get a like, fuller understanding of why people are just all up in arms and shocked and um, trying to shut down Scientology and the Scientologists. And we just see here's um, Danny Masterson. He was the star in that 70s show, a show that I've never watched. I think I put it on for five or ten minutes and went, Huh? I just, bad vibe from it. I did not like the, the people just, in the actor just, there was just something just did not click with me. I grew up in the 70s too, you know? But I couldn't connect. There was just, it not happening, folks, not happening. But I kind of see why now, because now I know all about who these people were and what was going on kind of behind the scenes. And we're going to get into some of that. Danny Masterson was born in March 13th of 1976. So he's about four years younger than me. He's probably around my sister's age. Um, like you all know my sister. Why do you even bring that up? Uh, random thoughts. <laughs> but anyway, he is Pisces, which is a mutable water sign. If you're interested in the astrology and I did not bother doing a birth chart or seeing if I knew his time of birth or any of that other stuff. It just didn't feel it was necessary with him. <laughs> now he comes from a family of Scientologists. He's like second generation. His parents were. Um, and so people were saying that he's been this great um, example in their lives and how to live. However, he's been accused and convicted of raping women, drugging and raping women. Now, I mentioned earlier about Scientology, how, you know, drugs don't do this, don't touch drugs. But he was using these drugs so that he could rape women and do lots of things that just, I'm not going to get into the details. I've already said the R word, rape, so, you know. If YouTube demonetizes, oh well, you know. <laughs> they might just demonetize because this is Scientology. Who knows the overreaching grasp of Scientology. <laughs> but anyway, he was considered just very high up in the church. His family's OG. And yet, he was doing all this horrific things and the women in the victims were also Scientology in the it were Scientologists at the time and the church kept them silent and that's what's important they have a way of isolating people and controlling media controlling what's out there there's a lot of money in this church, I'm telling you, and they have a lot of power and they have people in high places and they're able to protect members of the church when they're doing things such as what Danny has been convicted of. There's no alleged here. He fucking did it. And we know he's been charged and he is... and. When it came to sentencing, the victims came forward and gave victim statements, gave statements to the judge because they didn't want him out again. You know, they wanted him to get that max penalty. Now, the judge received numerous letters from other people who were trying to say what a good person Danny Masterson was. And apparently... People thought that these letters would be private. I think the church Scientology, Scientology was trying to manipulate the judge and had all, had lots of people write letters. Now, I'm going to get into a little bit about this right now. Ashton and Mila. If you're familiar with Ashton Kutcher and Mila, they are married and they were also on that 70s show. And they wrote letters to support Danny Masterson. Now, in the lead up to Danny Masterson's sentencing, Judge Charlene Olmedo told the courtroom that she had received nearly 50 character letters urging her to hand out a lighter sentence. 
50. There's normally not that many. <laughs> now, Mila Kunis and Ashton had written um, on behalf of their friend because he was being um, sentenced to 30 years. There was a possibility on two counts of forcible rape. Now, he has family, his siblings, and other actors like Alana, Christopher, and Jordan Masterson, as well as his wife, Bijou Phillips. Oh, now I need to make that correction there. She just filed for divorce. But she had originally written a letter to support Danny. Now I'm going to cover a little bit about these letters, what they said, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. We're going to start with Mila. Now, I want to talk about her. Um, first of all, we need to make sure it's understood and known that there is a lot of controversy when it comes to that 70s show and her character. I don't believe many people understood or knew that she was only 14. When she got the part, she claimed that she was like 18, but she wasn't. And when she got the part and it was found out that she was only 14, did the directors, the producers, change her character so that she wouldn't be having intimate sexual relationships? Her character wouldn't be in this series with actors who were in their 20s. No. In fact, Mila's first kiss was on the set with Ashton Kusher while she was just a minor. Okay. This is gross and icky. She was exposed to a lot of inappropriate situations, allegedly, I'll say that, while she um, was on the show. And she got into Scientology, and she is now married to Ashton. I... I worry about her. I think she is a victim. And she probably doesn't understand that she is one. Because it would be explained to her that no. Don't forget, we got that parasite alien. Now, this is what Mila had to say about Danny, who I, I'm not going to get into all the crap that he ever did to her that's inappropriate. Um, I am just, that is a, someone else, you know, another channel can cover some of that, but I want to tell you that she says that her dear friend discouraged her from using drugs, and she called him an outstanding role model and friend. Um, in her letter, she goes on to say his dedication to avoiding all substances was, has inspired not only me, but also countless others in our circle. Danny's steadfastness in promoting a drug-free lifestyle has been a guiding light in my journey through the entertainment world and has helped me prioritize my well-being and focus on making responsible choices. His genuine concern for those around him and his commitment to leading by example make him an outstanding role model and friend. They're really enforcing this whole drug-free being drug free well if you got to you know if you, if you survive listening to me talk about Scientology and explaining that yes they, they don't believe in any kind of drugs any psychiatric drugs any painkillers no nothing um and so part of this is trying to you know it's almost like they're trying to under right you know it's it's shady shit because the victims were drugged and raped according to their testimonies, which the court's found to be true. That's why he's been convicted and sentenced to 30 years. But there, it's almost like they are trying to, they're calling the victims liars in many ways with these statements. Now, Ashton Kutcher um, also wrote a letter and he said among, that he wrote that Masterson was among few people that I would trust to be alone with my son and daughter. Okay then. <laughs> now here's some other people who um, made statements 
Giovanni Ribsi in his letter to all Mad to the judge. He is the star in Sneaky Pete. He detailed how Masterson stayed at his parents' home when they were children during auditions, calling him an ethical, honest person who lived with the highest standards and work in family. Now, this but when you're kids, I mean, you can be a nice kid and grow up to be a shithead. It happens. But here's the thing. Remember, Danny is second generation in Scientology. His family is really big. And so they're like kind of put up on a pedestal so people would be looking up to them. They're advanced Scientologists. They have more knowledge and more experience and there's stuff that I can learn. This is what's going on in so many people's head. Now, Days and Confused actress Marissa Ribsey, she wrote on to say that Masterson became like a brother to her and very much part of her family and she explained how he would accompany her to dance camps and other activities. I'm getting a creepy vibe there, folks. But now Alana, who is um, Danny's sister and the youngest, she is the uh, Walking Dead star. She's in Walking Dead. She wrote mm -hmm, that in childhood and claimed that he stepped in to be. She wrote about the pair's childhood things that happened and claimed that, you know, he stepped into a father-like role for her and some of the other siblings while also providing them financially because he was this young actor. He was making a lot of money for the family. He kind of took on this other role that once again, he is being looked up high and put on this pedestal. Christopher Masterson, um, he is... Um, relay brother and he was in Malcolm in the Middle he said a lot what Alana said and wrote that his relationship with his um, nine year old daughter Fiona saying I very much hope he can be with her again um, he thinks that you know Danny is good for his daughter he is the good example now he's in jail and she doesn't have this example I just blows mine. Now we're getting into Vijou Phillips, who is his um wife. Now she is also from a science a family with science in Scientology. And she explained um on his relationship with their daughter. Now they're really focusing on how good he is with young kids. Gives me a creep vibe, knowing he's this you know convicted sex crime here. And people are like, oh, but I trust him with kids. And this is, once again, painting this picture that, see, I know he's not this horrible, violent person. He would do all these things because I trust him with my children. You see that manipulation there, folks? Do you see it? She writes that, um, with her, right with dog, she is far above grade level in all subjects, reading three grades above her own. And that is thanks to the guidance and attention of her father. You know, Bijou has nothing to do with the teachers have nothing to do with school. Oh, no! It's her dad. <laughs> Phillips also, Bijou also wrote in, t and the letter had to be heavily redacted. Um, but that he turned to the wine industry to support his family after he found himself unable to work in Hollywood. Basically, after all this, this stuff came out that he is a creep. And he wasn't being able to work in Hollywood. He, She's like, you know, he was able to still provide for us. He got into the wine industry. Okay, then. Now, Deborah Jo Roop, she also praised him. Kurt Wood Smith. Um, there's a bunch of 9-11 responders. Because, you see, they wrote, because Masterson had done charity work. And they had got to, for 9-11 and they met him. And they're like... They helped us raise nearly $1 million for the firefighters. Um, and one of the guys, you know, he is the founder of International Academy of Detoxification Specialists. He wrote that Danny, on the night, on that night, Danny and I became friends and I now consider him as part of the family. So, you know, because he part of that whole charity event you know Danny can't be this horrible person Billy Baldwin even <laughs> yes yes 
Um, he is actually Masterson's brother-in-law, and he also wrote a letter praising him. He's this is what he says: My name is William Baldwin. I have been with my wife China Phillips for thirty-two years. China is Bijou Masterson's sister. I've known my sister-in-law Bijou since she was only 10 years old, and in many ways I'm a father figure to her. I first met Danny in 2004 when he started dating her. We have a lot in common. We are both Irishmen from Long Island, both actors and producers in the entertainment industry, and both married to the amazing Phillips sisters. <laughs> they're, they're all the Scientologists. They're all just... Because, you know, being an Irishman from Long Island sure makes me a great guy. <laughs> I'm Irish, folks. I can diss my people. Um, he's like, goes on and on to say with the great person how he was there during his darkest hours. He's always been a good friend of the family. He's always such an ethical and honest person. You know, uh, it is... It is pretty disheartening that all this stuff has come out. And the fact that he was using a date rape drugs, oh, it is, it is horrible. And the letter, now Mila and Ashton came out to apologize, explain why they wrote these letters. They didn't think anybody would see anything with it. And they pretty much just discredited the victim's and praise Danny, and there was no apology. It's basically, we just didn't know you were all going to see that we were writing all this stuff. Um, there is a lot of information that I could go in further about Danny and the depravity of his mind, and Ashton also joking with him very, we're talking date rape jokes, and so forth on Howard Stern shows and just truly awful, awful behavior from both of these young men, of these men. Now they're not so young. So yeah, it's disgusting. It's vile. And I'm just like, I'm curious to see what's going on. Going to happen with Ashton and Mila Bijou. I'm glad that she is divorcing Danny. I don't know if she's staying in the church of Scientology. I, I don't know what the church thinks of her divorcing her husband. That is definitely something I want to ask in the tarot reading. And I think it is time for us to dive into all of that. All right, everyone. Welcome back. We're going to get into the tarot. Remember, that this is for entertainment. Things are alleged. Unless they're not. Because <laughs> Danny's already convicted of doing just this hateful, horrible things. But also, um, keep in mind that nothing here, that if I just discover anything while doing these readings, could ever be used in a court of law. I want to make sure this is clear. Um, let's get into this, folks. Oh, boy. I kind of want to look into Danny and Bijou right now. I'm going to look into what's going on with them. Um, Danny. Ugh. A lot of disbelief. A lot of anger. Um, misplaced anger is what I'm sensing. Um, the, you, those of you who are new here, I am a psychic medium. I don't just need tarot or tool to see things. I... I connect to people's energy connect to the spirits i'm shown things i can communicate with those who have passed away so if you start seeing me closing my eyes and i'm just saying things or sometimes my eyes are open it's because this is what i'm seeing what i'm sensing and i'm letting you all understand that that's what's going on here okay <sighs> but, um, isolated Bijou, um, her world's falling apart. And that's something you would say, is, that seems obvious, but 
all her beliefs and her beliefs in being protected has all, you know, through the church and there's this, there was, she never believed that Danny would ever actually ever been convicted and she did not believe that he could actually be sentenced, especially the max sentencing. Um, so there's, there's this questioning everything that she's believed and what she's learned. And yeah. Um, here is two coins reversed with Danny and Neela. There, that's definitely right there. They're they're apart. They, they're there's um. I think he has had owed so much money, and the church had been helping. I believe what I'm sensing here is with his legal stuff and getting him good, you know, cooking him up with attorneys that would help. Um. I see that there's concern, definite concern about how these finances are being divvied up, you know, and they're being split up. They're, they're not together anymore. And that's, yeah, that's the way it's going. Yeah. Oof. I, I feel for, for the victims, you know, but everything, there's been a lot of mismanagement of the finances because they were putting everything, believing that they were, Danny would be um, exonerated and be able to return to the business and make money. So they didn't they didn't manage money wisely. Um, this is probably why she's getting a divorce because she realizes she needs to separate him, herself from him so that she can be able to work and not be ostracized like him. Although she did write that letter she, that she definitely has second thought. Um, I'm trying to see. He was very controlling and manipulative of her. Okay, here's the Five of Swords. And here's the Tower. Both of these are reversed, okay? So, um, here's the thing. With Danny, everything is, it, it, there is going to be no reconciliation. Danny has, it's like he wants to try and make things better. He doesn't want the divorce uh at the same time i think i think he thinks he's going to be getting out of jail a lot sooner and he's got some delusions obviously and the five of swords reverse this is she's having to move on Dan, there's, danny still feels that he loves her but she does not love him this is unreciprocated love going on here and fighting and the tower reversed. You know, the tower is usually a dramatic event that tears everything apart. Him sentencing did. And with it reversed, it's like, nope. It's, there is, it's disaster. It can't, there's no recovery. He has, you know, a lot of times this just means imprisonment. And that's exactly what Danny is. He's been imprisoned. And so there's no reconciliation between the two. There's a lot of financial matters. She's very scared about the finances. Let's see if I pick up anything else. Um, she is going. She's trying to find her inner strength in herself. She has never. She has relied on others and not found that she could be strong inside of her. And she is going to be learning how to be more empowered herself and not. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing a, 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 she is going to be coming out of, the, if you know my deck, this deck, and you know that this card always remembers that means a cult, usually means a cult, cold atmosphere, and it's near reverse, this is her finding the strength to leave. She's, um, seeing someone outside, I know Leah is going to be reaching out to her. Um, and I can see others just wanting to help her heal. Um, four, we're dealing with another four, but this is the four pentacles and it's in reverse. Um, the four is four upright is holding on, you know, it's, um, holding on, holding on, you know, being impoverished, but this is recovery and finding improvement and becoming financially stable. She's going to learn that she can be on her own. And she's starting to see that this is 
feelings and emotions where she can't and break free. So I am happy to hear that his wife is, um, I really believe she's going to be on a road of recovery and we'll probably hear her stepping away. Um, it probably will be very quiet. I know the Scientologist, Church of Scientology would try and silence her and anything that she tries to say and do. You've got to remember, they have a lot of power. But thing is, times are changing. Social media, people can speak out. They can't control all that. Let's look into Mila and Ashton. Okay. Because I want to know what's going on with them. Well... <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the cards that flip up. And <laughs> all I'm gonna say is, the wheel of fortune is reversed. <laughs> yeah. um, Ashton did step down. Oh, too. ironically, he founded a foundation. <laughs> he and his wife were were helping victims of sex trafficking. after they wrote those letters, they have recently had to step down. Can't imagine why. No, no, no. Here's the thing. The King of Swords here is reversed. This is Ashton. Um, I don't know his sign, but this is this, this is his energy here. And this is someone who they're smart, manipulative, They've got the charisma that can lure you in, but they're very controlling and very abusive. And very selfish, very selfish, but they're always saying, oh, but this is all for you. Yeah, because he wants you to make you his puppet and control you. He has, you know, he, he could toss you aside and once you are all used up in his eyes. It's really the, the feeling I get from here. He's extremely cruel and abusive. Um, and that's going to be coming to light because you see here, um, this is the moon, the moon, all the secrets. We're, more and more stuff is coming out about Ashton and what happened to Mila. Um, Mila, I am very worried about. She, she, um, I just sense fear. Lots of fear, fear, fear. Um, doesn't feel worthy. I'm unworthy. To even be with Ashton, I'm not good enough. Um, I have to do everything he says so that I can become better. Is These are the things that I'm really sensing here, that I'm seeing. It's like, um, she's scared to be without him because she doesn't realize that she could live on her own or take care of herself. This whole thing, is she is like... Very codependent, and this isn't healthy. She's been made and broken down to believe that she needs him and she needs the church. Um, but it's, it's things are gonna come out, and like, ugh. I don't like the, the, the sun here is reversed. So we got the moon upright, which is all about hidden agendas, secrets, and then we got the sun reversed. This is um, very pessimistic, very confused and lonely, isolated. And then I have the five of swords, and this time the five of swords is upright. This is a lot of conflict and fighting between the two of them, and it is there's definite bullying, and there could be violence. You know, I'm not saying that he is striked her allegedly it's more of he will strike out at other things which brings that fear and intimidation um yeah this is she she needs to get away she needs to get away um 
she's very codependent though on, on him and financially dependent. Um, he, yeah, she needs to get away. Oh, honey. Oh, the Bila's in trouble. I don't. I worry. Okay, yeah. The Knight of Swords reversed. Decisions are being made between the two of them very reckless. Um, very disorganized. But there's this. They're trying to find a rethink how they handle. It. It's like okay, we got to rethink how I handle this. How I'm going to be going forward, um, because. It's all a mess. Um, there is very a disregard for consequences. Ashton still is in denial of these consequences. It's more like he sees that this isn't my doing. You know, this is just trauma that I have to to survive. Um, he doesn't believe. He still believes Danny's purely innocent. Mila's questioning things. Um, things aren't so black and white in her mind anymore. The Seven of Pentacles is upright. And this is, this is the person with the money. They're looking worried, nurse. This is working really hard. Um, so I think Mila is gonna start working more on herself i think she's gonna get into maybe bijou or someone's gonna help her but she she might be wanting to start something new financially i think they realize ashton her their cred in hollywood is going down it's like we have to start all over again we gotta take a new training new new work um trying to find new ways to make money um, but the Seven of Swords here reversed is 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 running. <laughs> um, there, this is all about that crazy fake apology they gave. Um, there's a lot of paranoia, and they're afraid that the church can't keep some of the stuff that's happened and things that they've done suppressed and quiet anymore. So there's this, we got to regroup. We got to try and find new ways of making money. You got to remember the church expects this highest amounts of money being paid to them. And if you don't have the money, well, you're not that important to them. Huh. So, there's a few uh, readings I just did um, on Danny and Bijou, and now on. Then I did an Ashton and Mila. I am really sensing Leah right now, and I think I need to do a reading for her. Um, I'm going to grab this deck right here. All right, Leah, Leah. Let's see here. What do you want to show me? Mm -hmm. Um. Sheesh. Um, well, interesting. Here's the Ten of Pentacles. I think she's going to be, there's like, she's going to be, um, taking financially, she's going to cultivate a business, um, a, a way of helping people, um, leaving a legacy, her legacy of leaving the Church of Scientology and standing up to all their attacks and the way they tried to keep her out of Hollywood, discredit her. Um, it's all coming out. She has this legacy and she has waited a long time. Here's the eight of wands reverse. If this is upright, this is action usually going speed, 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 but um, things are slowing down. 
Um, she is in a bit of panic because she is very worried about the victims, other victims that are out there. And um, Bijou and Mila, I think she really hopes to try and help them. Um, let's see here. She has a foundation, doesn't she? Because I just see that that's going to be growing even more so. Yeah. As soon as I said that, this card popped up. Yeah. This is the Nine of Cups. This is the fruitation of all. This is she's looking at all her work and help for mental health and helping people. Um, she, it, yeah, she is doing fucking amazing. Um, and she's going to be bringing a lot more abundance and happiness to others and other victims. All of this that has brought up, it's put, you know, the work that she's doing to help those who have been, affect, been in Scientology or were affected by family and friends who were in Scientology. She's able to help. There's the sun here. This is recovery and happiness and joy. There's the, the darkness. It's like Leah... Oh, she has been through so much shit. She's finally able to breathe. It's like, I don't need to try and convince the world that I am right. You know, people aren't looking at me like I'm crazy and insane. And how dare I speak badly about these people in Scientology. It's now like, ah, things have come to light and people believe me and I'm, have a voice. She has a voice now. And I'm just sensing just, oh, this relief. Like a celebration. Um, I just, yeah. <laughs> Some of the ones. She's right. She's going to be rising above. Fighting back everybody. She's going to be very, she's going she's to have, people are going to be coming at her and the others. They're going to try. And whatever they try is not going to succeed. The Ace of Wands here is just them like, they are, they're basically going to become impotent, powerless. Because, well, truth always comes out, doesn't it? Sooner or later, it sneaks up and karma comes and, you know, you either get blessed or they're like, you are being held now accountable. And being held accountable, you can get blessed or you can just get fucked, you know, punished. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of seeing here. And I'm happy to hear that, you know, she's doing better and going to be doing better. Um, <laughs> wow, so that's it. This video is super, super long and I apologize, but there was so much that needed to be covered. And I, of course, I have the chapter link so you can do with it with what you wish. I love you guys. I really do. I appreciate everybody and all of your comments and your views. Please share these videos. Get this out there so others can find me and also watch. And guess what? Yes, I now am um, doing personal readings. Um, I have different tiers in my Patreon that you can join. You get on my Discord server. The highest tier you actually do get personal readings. It's also limited about how many people can get in that tier. And if you become a member of this channel, you can also join my Discord server. I gotta tell you, this is it's a safe, fun space to talk about all this kind of stuff and everything that I cover, the different topics and genres that I cover in my videos and um, you can go to my website, desparted.com, desparted.net. It's the same. You can go there and you can also book readings. Right now I have, um, just w simple readings for $10 on sale. There are other in depth and I will even do a birth chart for you if you pay up even more. And the readings can either be in video or just, I just images that I send and explain to you in writing what's going on. Um, but please go ahead, visit my site, go to the store. I'll have the links down below and you can check it out and book me. If you want to um, support me in other ways, you can make donations through my cash app, Venmo, and 
Also, just by hitting that little heart thank you button and paying through here <laughs> on YouTube. Also, what else was I going to say? I do have an Amazon wish list. So if you just want to send me a surprise gift, thank you. I appreciate it. I, in fact, I wear lots of my gifts that I've gotten from people. I appreciate that so much or it's all behind me. I love you guys. Remember, remember, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. I love you. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> Be kind to others. And I will see you around. Music